I'm the division administrator for the Charities and Legal Services Division at the Office of the Secretary of State. Our division is responsible for flags, among many other duties. Um, as indicated in the email notification about today's town hall, this town hall will be recorded. A link to the recording will be available on the Secretary of State's website within a few days of this town hall, as will the slides from the PowerPoint. Uh, they will also be available. Uh, by choosing to join us today, you are consenting to the recording as part of this town hall. The Secretary of State's office is customarily entrusted with the role of educating the public right. about the history, protocol, and appropriate display of the Maryland state flag individually and as flown with other flags. And our office issues flag alerts to other agencies when the Maryland state flag, the U.S. flag, or both will be flown at half staff and to members of the public who subscribe to the flag alerts. Every time the president or governor issues in order to lower the or raise the flags, it's our staff that issues those notifications. Um, it bears repeating that this, this town hall will be recorded. A link to the recording will be available on the Secretary of State's website within a few days of this town hall. <clears throat> and again, it'll be uh, the, the recording and the PowerPoint will be posted. Uh, the time is reserved for questions at the end of today's town hall. If you have questions, you may find that they're answered during the presentation. Uh, also, you may place them in the chat box. One of our team members will announce those questions at the end, uh, especially the frequently asked questions uh, where they may answer it in the chat box as we're going. Um, and in order to prevent confusion about the sources of responses, uh, unless you're a Secretary of State employee, please don't answer those questions in the chat box. Um, we get some well-intentioned folks sometimes that uh, that may know or we've experienced on our other town halls that, that try to answer, uh, we'll, we'll read them off at the end if they're not already answered. And uh, please know that the content and presenta presentation provided is for informational purposes only. It is not intended to be legal advice. Our staff is available at the Secretary of State's office to answer your questions, uh, to provide information only, but we cannot provide legal advice. Uh, for legal advice, individuals should contact legal counsel who specialize in that particular area of law. Um, and just one more time mentioning that, uh, that today's recording in PowerPoint will be posted on the Maryland flag information link on our website. And finally, the content and presentation provide us for informational purposes only, not intended to be legal advice. As we begin, please mute your microphone. Uh, you may keep your camera on if you like, uh, see those smiling faces, uh, but please do mute your microphone. Thank you. And uh, let's get started. So uh, history of the Maryland flag. Uh, the Maryland flag has, has been described as the perfect state flag. It's, you know, bold in colors, interesting patterns, and uh, correct heraldry, a flag that shouts Maryland. Uh, the design of the flag comes from the shield and the coat of arms of the Calvert family, the colonial proprietors of Maryland. Uh, proprietor was given governmental powers over the land by the by the English crown. So George Calvert, the first Lord of Baltimore, adopted a coat of arms that included a shield with the alternating quadrants featuring yellow and black of his paternal family and the red and white colors of his maternal family, the Crosslands. And in 1904, the General Assembly adopted the design as the state flag, and that link was forged between modern day Maryland and the various, very earliest chapters uh, of Maryland and the Calvert family. In 1945, the Gold Cross Botany was made the official ornament for the flagstaff carrying the Maryland flag. I'm pointing out here that that doesn't mean you have to have an ornament on top of the, the flagpole carrying the flag, uh, but if you do have an ornament on top of the flagpole carrying the Maryland flag, it should be the Gold Cross Botany. Detailed history of the Maryland flag uh, can be found on our website on the flag history page. And uh, we'll make sure that link, that direct link gets put in the chat as well. Uh, but there's all kinds of good information on the website about the flag and its history and care. Statutory authority of the Secretary of State's office regarding flags. So the Secretary of State is required by law to issue a state flag to a family of a firefighter, a policeman, or member of the military, sworn member of the state fire marshal, or other professional volu or volunteer emergency medical service provider killed in performance of duty. Uh, when the 
deceased person is a member of the military, the flags presented to the family uh, by the state senator in the legislative district in which that person resides or served. And uh, when the deceased is a member of the military, the flag is presented to the family uh, through the Department of Veterans Affairs. <clears throat> So there's a custom of the Secretary of State regarding flags. So we're customarily entrusted with the role of educating the public about the history, protocol, and display of the Maryland State flag, both individually and as flown with others. And the Secretary of State, uh, as mentioned earlier, issues flag alerts to other agencies when the Maryland State flag, U.S. flag, or, or both will be flown at half staff. If you're subscribed to the to the the email list we have regarding flags, you'll you'll remember a couple that went out recently. Uh, the one jumping out to me is the one for former Secretary of State Madeleine Albright. The president issued a proclamation to lower the flags for the former Secretary of State uh, for a certain period of time. And then when that happens, we also push out an alert to make sure that people know that, but also that the Maryland flag is flown at half staff as well. So uh, there's an executive order. Uh, the Maryland flag shall be flown at half staff on any occasion deemed appropriate and for a period prescribed by the governor or the governor's representative. That's an executive order from 1999. Uh, essentially, uh, the Maryland flag, the governor has the authority to order lowered at any time uh, deemed appropriate by the governor or the governor's authorized representative. So uh, presidential proclamation or governor's order, those are those are generally the two ways the flag goes down. Uh, the Secretary of State will issue the notification. Uh, if the president has issued a proclamation, we will also uh, issue something about that by email to let folks know that the president has ordered a had issued a proclamation to, to lower the flag. Uh, and there's a chart. Uh, uh, within a few pages here that'll that'll explain uh, kind of breaks down how long the flags are lowered depending on certain circumstances uh, and also we'll talk about uh, there's certain days every year where the flag is flown at half staff so certain days for the U.S. flag and certain days where only the Maryland flag is flown at half staff um, and uh, so we'll go over that and some of the protocol for that here in a little bit so armed forces, uh, the Secretary of Veterans Affairs informs the Secretary of State's office when a member of the armed forces dies in the line of duty. The U.S. and Maryland flags are lowered to half staff from sunrise to sunset on the day of interment when a member of the armed forces dies in the line of duty. Uh, so there is a federal law that authorizes the governor in certain situations to order both the Maryland and the U.S. flags to half staff. Ordinarily, the governor has authority to lower the Maryland flag to half staff, but in a few situations, they're also authorized to lower the U.S. flag to half staff. And this is one of those situations. You have a member of the armed forces from the state that dies in the line of duty. The governor has the ability to order both the U.S. and Maryland flags to half staff. The police firefighter or correctional officer killed in the line of duty. Uh, similar thing here with the governor. Uh, is also, you know, the Maryland flags lowered immediately. The governor also under federal law has the authority to order the U.S. flag flown to half staff. So if a first responder, any of these folks mentioned on here were to die in the line of duty, and a tragedy of that of that nature, uh, the governor can order both the U.S. and Maryland flags to half staff. And that's issued upon us learning that and um, it's lower to half staff effective immediately and returned to full staff at sunset on the day of internment of that individual. So many times in those situations, you, you, know, you find out about the passing, you order the flags lowered, and at some point in time after that, we find out the scheduled day of internment and we'll issue a second notice that explains when to raise the flag, uh, you know, regarding the passing of this particular individual in this circumstance. So we don't always have a uh, date when the flag will return to full staff, uh, but when that date is known, we'll let everybody know. So uh, the governor has discretion to alter time frames to lower the Maryland flag. Orders from the governor supersede anything uh, on the protocol chart that's going to follow this. Um, so this chart is a guide, it's protocol, um, but uh, governor, just like a president, uh, could order something different if they chose.
And here's this chart, it's a pretty big chart, um, takes up a lot of the page. And this chart is available if you're on the Secretary of State's homepage, sos.maryland.gov. On the right hand side, you'll usually see a picture of the flags and the current status of the flag position. And under that, it, there's a link for protocol. And this chart is actually found there as well. So if you're struggling to write this down quickly, you don't have to write it down quickly. You can get this right off our website as well at sos.maryland.gov and click on the protocol uh, link right there by the flag picture on the right side of the Secretary of State's homepage. Uh, but you'll see the first, the first part of this list, President, Vice President, Chief Justice, Retired Chief Justice, Speaker of the House, Associate Justice, Secretary or Executive or Military Department, Secretary of an Executive Branch or Military Department, former Vice President, member of US Congress or Senate or Governor of the state. Those are all things that come from uh, the federal level and federal law prescribes a time uh, for which the flag should be lowered to half staff for the individuals mentioned there. Uh, these are gonna come by way of presidential proclamation. Usually the president will issue something that explains lowering the flags for an individual that fits these criteria for a prescribed amount of time. If you're ever wondering why why is that time chosen, uh, many of those times are are, are referenced in, in federal law and the federal code. And uh, this chart kind of breaks that down for everybody. <clears throat> Underneath of that, starting at Maryland Lieutenant Governor, Maryland Delegate, Senator County Exec, former Governor, former Lieutenant Governor, former congressman or senator from Maryland, former delegate senator or county exec in Maryland or cabinet secretary in Maryland uh, are, are also, they're, they're issued by the governor. So the governor's usually gonna have an or, uh, order to lower the flag for the passing one of these individuals for a particular amount of time. And this is usually the, the period of time for which the flags are ordered lowered in these particular circumstances. Uh, then as you get a little further down there, you see Maryland firefighter, police officer, correctional officer, really any, any first responder in Maryland or a member of the armed forces that dies in the line of duty. Um, these are situations where the governor not only has the authority to order the Maryland flag lowered, but also has the authority to issue, to order the United States flag lowered for the passing of these particular individuals. So it's kind of grouped there. Um, and at the bottom, you see presidential proclamation and in those cases, you, you follow the instructions as issued by the president uh, for lowering the flag. <clears throat> so local jurisdictions, one of the questions we sometimes get asked is um, about whether or not uh, county or municipal government uh, officials may order a Maryland flag lowered on, on property in their jurisdiction. I think the answer to that question is yes. Uh, the Maryland flag should be flown at half staff when ordered by county and municipal government officials on all property under their jurisdiction. It's also an executive order from 1999. And it allows county and municipal governments to lower the Maryland flag on their properties uh, if, if they choose to do so. Um, we don't usually know when or why that's happening uh, because we're, you know, we're issuing orders based on something that the governor ordered, uh, but a county or municipal government may do that. And if you're ever uh, you know, driving past one of their buildings, looking at the flag at half staff, wondering, can they do that? They can uh, on their property, they can do that. So honoring uh, heroes, um, there are uh, certain days every year that the United States flag and Maryland flags are lowered uh, at, to half staff. Uh, those days are Peace Officers Memorial Day, Memorial Day, Patriot Day, uh, the first Sunday, usually the first Sunday in October, it's it's the National Fallen Firefighters Memorial Service as part of Fire Prevention Week. And then uh, Pearl Harbor Remembrance Day as well. Those five days, the flags are always lowered to half staff. Uh, one of those days, Memorial Day, the flag is lowered from sunrise until noon and then at noon, the flag is returned to full staff. And um, the other four days, the flag's at half staff all day, ordinarily from sunrise to sunset. And um, so these, these come across every year. You'll see a couple of these days are coming up very soon, Peace Officers Memorial Day and Memorial Day. 
uh, are both coming up in May. And this is a situation where the U.S. flag is lowered to half staff, which means that the Maryland flag is also lowered to half staff. Um, when we talk about lowering the United States flag to half staff, when that happens, the Maryland flag should also be lowered to half staff as no flag should fly higher than the United States flag. So anytime the U.S. flag goes down to half staff, the Maryland flag goes down to half staff as well. <clears throat> Couple days or a few days in Maryland where the Maryland flag every year is, is lower to half staff. Uh, one is Civil Rights Heroes Day, February 20th. And um, what you know, courage, sacrifice, and relentless efforts of civil rights uh, heroes and abolition leaders throughout history, uh, and also reaffirming our commitment to be a land of opportunity, hope, and justice for every citizen. So every 20th, the Maryland flag is lower to half staff. And then two other days. Uh, where the Maryland flag is lowered to half staff as well every year, the first Friday in May, which is Fallen Heroes Day, uh, in honor of Maryland's emergency responders who have died in a lot of duty during the prior year. And then uh, the other day is Maryland Fire and Rescue Services Memorial Remembrance Day, and that's the first Sunday in June every year, and that's for Fire and Rescue Services uh, Memorial Ceremony that takes place on that first Sunday in June every year. You'll notice these two days are coming up as well, uh, first Friday in May, first Sunday in June. So here in the next uh, the next month, five weeks or so, we're going to have uh, four days on which one or both flags are flown at half staff. You have the first Friday in May, which is Fallen Heroes Memorial Day. Then on May 15th, you'll have Peace Officers Memorial Day, which is both the U.S. and Maryland flags at half staff. Then you'll have Memorial Day which is both U.S. and Maryland flags and half staff. And then you'll have the first Sunday in June, which is fire, Maryland Fire and Rescue Services Memorial Remembrance Day, and the Maryland flag will be at half staff on that day. So four of them coming up here in, uh, in very short order, uh, where we'll send out a notification a couple days in advance uh, regarding the two Maryland ones, and then following uh, you know notification from the president on the the other two fire uh, peace officers Memorial Day and Memorial Day to lower the flags. Uh, a few other, a uh, couple other flags here to talk about and some significance there. The prisoner of war missing in action flag uh, honors those that are prisoners of war and missing in action or were prisoners of war and missing in action. The honor remember flag uh, is another flag. It's designed to honor all members of the armed forces who died in the line of duty. We don't issue notifications regarding the times to fly the POW MIA flag or the honor and remember flags. There are certain days of the year where the POW MIA flag and honor and remember flags will fly on the state house property. Uh, that's Armed Forces Day, which is the third Saturday in May. You have Memorial Day, Independence Day, Veterans Day, Saturday and Sunday closest to Memorial and Veterans Days and uh, POW MIA Recognition Day, which is the third Friday in September. So on those days, those flags will fly on state house grounds. And if you're looking, uh, you know, what days, if you have a POW MIA flag and you want to fly it, these are days on which uh, they're going to fly on state house grounds for particular reasons related to this flag. POW, MIA, and Honor Remember flags are, are flown on, on the right side of the building, usually the State House, uh, when facing Road Boulevard. So they're there and they're flying on these days. A uh, couple things specifically with the POW, MIA flags, um, with the exception of the State House or a State Building that's a historic building or a state building that has a flagpole attached but is determined to be structurally unable to withstand additional flags. Uh, the Secretary of General Services and Transportation uh, shall fly the POW MIA flags on those grounds of those state buildings under their control whenever the United States flag is flown. So a uh, very long-winded way of saying if, if, uh, if it's a general, Department of General Services or Transportation building, uh, you're going to usually see the POW MIA flag out there with the United States flag, unless the building or the flagpole itself is, is structurally unable to handle that additional flag. And uh, the POW MIA flag is flown below the United States flag on state buildings. So if you're seeing a POW MIA flag on the same pole as the United States flag, it's going to be beneath that flag 
if a United States flag is flown at half staff, the POW MIA flag is also flown at half staff. Uh, when only the Maryland flag is flown at half staff, the POW MIA flag is still flown at full staff with the United States flag. So the POW MIA flag mirrors the position of the United States flag. It, it is independent of the position of the Maryland flag. So if only the Maryland flag is at half staff and the United States flag is at full staff, that POW MIA flag uh, can also be flown at full staff. If the United States flag is at half staff, then the POW MIA and Maryland flags would be at half staff as well. Again, no flag flying higher than that United States flag. Uh, Blue Star Banner. Uh, some of you folks may have seen this particular flag. Um, it's really designed, it's a reminder that war touches every neighborhood. And um, it, it was designed and patented in 1917 uh, by a World War I Army captain uh, in the Ohio Infantry, uh, whose two sons served on the front line and became an unofficial symbol for parents at the time with children in active military service. And, and during World War II, the Department of War issued specifics on manufacturing this particular flag and uh, set some guidelines indicating when it when in, can be flown and by whom it can be flown. And it became an authorized service flag and service lapel in 1967 by the Department of Defense. Families uh, display banners when their loved ones are serving in active duty, and the blue star represents one family member serving. Uh, banners can display up to five stars, so if you see a flag like this with two stars, that would indicate that that family has two members serving. Uh, and, and this, you know, this flag was really rekindled after the September 11th terrorist attacks. Uh, in honor of the military families across the nation. Uh, so a few things here with Maryland flag protocol, um, proper display. Uh, Maryland flag should always be raised briskly and lowered slowly and ceremoniously. You ever see a flag going up the flagpole relatively quickly, uh, but being lowered slowly, uh, it's part of the protocol for displaying that flag. This is why that, that happens. The Maryland flag shall be flown with the black stripe on the diagonal band in the first quarter at the top of the flag staff, as that picture shows on the right. Uh, the yellow corner is on the bottom part of the flag. So uh, black corner of the flag is on the top at the highest part of the flagpole, just as shown in that picture. Only a gold cross botany may be used as an ornament on top of the flag staff that carries the Maryland flag. Again, that doesn't mean you have to have an ornament on the Maryland flag, but if you're going to use an ornament on the Maryland flag, it should be that gold cross botany. And uh, the flag protocol proper display page on our website uh, gives more information about all these matters. And uh, one other thing we have on our website is a uh, protocol for folding the Maryland flag. Uh, so if you're ever trying to figure out how to properly fold a flag, um, our website has that information as well. And again, we'll make sure the link to the flag info page where all this can be found gets posted in that chat box. And this is courtesy of the Maryland Military Department. You really see the first step and the last step on these pictures, but it's a several step process for folding that flag. And uh, folks can subscribe to flag notifications uh, on our website. And uh, you can click on that link. Uh, so this will be posted as well, but the link is also found online. Uh, to get notifications for when the U.S. and Maryland flags are to be lowered to half staff. Uh, so if you receive them already, great. If not, you want to sign up, great as well. Uh, you can go to the link there and type in the email address and sign up and subscribe for flag notifications from us. And that way, you'll always be in the know. If the flag is lowered, you'll know why and you'll know when and for how long and when it's raised to full staff. And uh, it's, it's easy, it's free, you know, there's not a, it's not a fee or a subscription fee or anything like that. You just sign up and subscribe to be a part of that list uh, and you'll receive emails moving forward from that point in time. So uh, with that said and all that information given, I'm um, gonna we'll return here. Uh, do we have any questions in that chat box? And it looks like we do here, uh, Philip, uh, with, uh, would it be put on a YouTube link? Uh, yes, it will be. Uh, within a few days, this will be up on our website. And uh, it'll be, uh, I'm gonna put the link right now in the chat box. Um, 
just added that link to the chat box on that particular page is where the link to the YouTube video and the actual slides from this presentation will be posted. You'll see the slides from last year's presentation on there right now. Uh, but I was also referencing pages on our website that have a lot more information about history and protocol uh, in general, but also protocol for folding that link that I just put in the chat box is that link as well that you can go to to find out more information uh, regarding the flags. Um, and uh, and, and Danny Bur Dana Burl, yes, uh, definitely we can share those with you as well. And um, I'll uh, throw my email in there real quick. Just shoot me an email and I'll make sure that we share these with you. Uh, do we have uh, any other questions that weren't the chat box? Anybody have anything they want to ask uh, that we would be able to answer? Uh, Al, you got a hand raised? Go ahead. Uh, thank you. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yep, great. Okay. Um, you kind of addressed this with the PIA or MIA POW flag, mm -hmm. but other flags are like, for instance, we fly a county flag alongside the american and the state when mm -hmm. the state is flagged does the state is lowered does the county have to be lowered as well uh if you're on the the same flagpole yeah you, your priority would be u.s flag then maryland flag then then county or local jurisdiction flag so if they're on the same pole uh they should be uh although there's not uh so let me double check something here real quick um something that i that i know of um where the county flag has to be lowered if the maryland one is lowered uh where you know the the general protocol is no flag may fly higher than the u.s flag um but um, i'm gonna double check something here for a minute and make sure i am right on that one equal height um yep yeah there's nothing there's nothing that mandates that uh, but if they are on the same pole, then of course, you know, if one's one above it is lowered, you have to lower the other ones. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You got it. Thank you. Good question. And there's uh, one of the uh, uh, on that flag link to uh, the, the protocol link that I shared in that chat box uh, display with other flags. There's a page that goes in much greater detail about display, display when displaying with the US and Maryland, when you have other countries and other states and local jurisdictions, it breaks it down in further detail as well on display with those other flags, multiple flags and at varying levels of government. Uh, Philip, I see a hand raised. Thank you. Um, my question is the orientation based off of north south or east west roadways kind of like the uh national flag where if we're draping it for fire department crossed aerials or anything like that kind of like we do on the first sunday in june is there mm -hmm. a direction that that black square has to go yeah let me uh let me look that up there actually there is um one second though make sure i describe it correctly uh so if you are uh, draping a maryland flag so it's not flying from a flagpole but you are draping it that black corner will still be in the upper left of the flag and the yellow corner will still be in the bottom right of the flag so if you're draping an american flag that that blue corner of the flag is in the upper left hand side while you're draping it from the viewer's perspective. Um, so if I'm looking at the flag, uh, the stars in the blue box on the American flag are in the upper left corner. And if I'm looking at the Maryland flag, the black corner is in the upper left and the yellow is on the lower right. Now, if I'm if I'm the one showing it, it would be, you know, it would be the opposite of that. That's also one of the things in that, uh, if you go to the, the link in that chat box that I threw up there and, um, you're on that Maryland flag information page and you click on in the upper right, there's a flag protocol link. And one of the six items on that flag protocol page, it shows proper display. And it actually is an image that'll help you 
uh, to, uh, to break that down. I'm gonna throw that direct link in the uh, chat box as well. Uh, but there is an image on our website that'll help with that exact question about draping the flags on overpasses and things of that nature. So I just added that to the chat box also. If you click right on there, it'll give you the image. And if you're like me, seeing the picture is way better than having somebody try to describe it. Um, but that'll, that'll answer that question exactly, I think. And if not, like I said, if anybody thinks of something after the fact, or maybe you don't want to ask it to here publicly, my email's in that chat box as well. You can always just send me an email and uh, we'll, uh, we'll help you out. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Good question. Any other questions? Going once, going twice. Okay. Um, well, I mean, in closing, uh, there's a wide array, wide array of resources about flags that are available online. Uh, easiest way uh, is, to, is to Google search them as, as simple as that sounds. You, know, you do an online search. Uh, an info about the Maryland flag, uh, the American flag, can, all, can be found on many sites, uh, including uh, there's a USA.gov backslash flag, which I'm uh, putting in the chat box now as well. And then, of course, uh, the American Legion. Uh, has some good information as well about flags and, and flag uh, information. And Veterans of Foreign Wars websites also oftentimes have uh, flag information about the United States flag. And of course, the Maryland Office of the Secretary of State has uh, has a lot of information about the Maryland flag uh, at the links that I throw in there in the, uh, in the chat box as well. So um, thanks for all that joined today. Uh, if there's no other questions, uh, hopefully this town hall was informative and helpful. Uh, we'll have it posted online as well, the PowerPoint and the recording uh, within the next few days. And it'll be on that flag information page on the Secretary of State's website. If anybody is trying to subscribe and is having an issue getting themselves subscribed to the flag notification, send me an email, let me know. We'll get it taken care of. And uh, just in... Uh, uh, special thanks to all those that, that have served our country honorably and are currently serving in the armed forces and their families. Uh, thank you for your sacrifices and, and for your family sacrifices to, to, you know, that, that the family and the individuals make to protect and serve our great nation. And, uh, thanks again, everybody for joining us. Uh, God bless America and, uh, the people of the great state of Maryland. Thank you very much, everybody.